let's talk about relations. So let S and T be sets. And we have a definition. Let me say definitions. We'll have more than one. The first definition will be that of a relation. So a relation from S to T. So we're defining what it means for something to be a relation from S to T. Well, what is it? A relation from S to T is a subset, which we'll call R, of the Cartesian product of S with T. That's all it is. It's a subset of a Cartesian product, two. A relation on a set S. So we're defining what it means for something to be a, rel a relation on a set S is a relation from S to S. So it est a subset, which again we'll call R, of the Cartesian product S times S. So it's just a subset of this particular Cartesian product. Let's talk a little bit about the notation we use. So since R is a subset of this particular Cartesian product, uh, normally we would use notation like this. So instead of the normal notation, which would be S1 comma S2 in R, that would be the usual way to do things. We use different notation. We use, whoops, we use this. S1 is related to S2. So when we write S1, R, S2, or S1 is related to S2, we really mean this, right? But this is the way uh, people tend to do things. It's just much easier to think about, and uh, it just makes a lot more sense. A couple more definitions, some more definitions. We'll look at some examples uh, soon, once we're done with all of these definitions. It's quite a, quite a few of them, but they're not hard, and it's really important to, to know them. So in the definitions that follow, let R be a relation on S. So R is a relation on S. And so the first definition is that of what we say, or what we call reflexivity. So R is reflexive so R is reflexive if S is related to S for all S and S. Right, so S is related to S for all S and S. That's what it means for a relation R to be reflexive to R is symmetric. So we say a relation is symmetric if whenever S1 is related to S2, then, whoops, S2, then S2 is related to S1. And this has to be true for all S sub 1 s sub 2 in s. So that's what it means to be symmetric. 3. R is transitive. Okay, we say a relation R is transitive if whenever s1 is related to s2 
and S2 is related to S3. So if we have both of these conditions, then it follows that S1 is related to S3. And this has to be true for all S1, S2, S3, and S. So those are the basic properties of, of relations. There are more properties we can define, but for our purposes, which is group theory, theory uh, we only really need these three for now. So another definition. So R is an equivalence relation. So we say it's an equivalence relation. if R has the following three properties. So it's an equivalence relation if it's reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. So if R is a relation that satisfies definitions 1, 2, and 3, we say R is an equivalence relation. We're done with the definitions, so let's go ahead and look at a couple uh, examples. So let's see, first example, let's let S be the set of all people, all the people in the entire world, and we're going to define the following relation on R will say that X is related to Y if X has the same parents as Y. In this case, R is an equivalence relation. So R is an equivalence relation. Kind of a, a silly example, but it just goes to show that you can really use uh, relations for anything. Let's do another example. How about something like this? We'll set S equal to the set of real numbers, and we will say that X is related to Y if x is less than y. That's how we're defining our relation. We're saying that x is related to y if x is less than y. Well, x is not less than x. So r is not reflexive. So it's not a reflexive relation in this case. It's also not symmetric if x is less than y, then is it true that y is less than x? No, then y is not less than x. So r is not symmetric. So it's not reflexive. It's not symmetric. Is it transitive? Let's see. If x is less than y and y is less than z, well, yeah, well then X is less than Z. So R is transitive. So we have a relation R that's not reflexive, not symmetric, but it is transitive. So kind of a, a nice uh, example. Let's look at another one. Let's set S to be the set of complex numbers. And we'll say that z sub 1 is related to z sub 2 if z sub 1 is not equal to z sub 2. In this case, uh, r is not reflexive. It is not transitive.
but R is symmetric, right? R is symmetric. Certainly, if Z1 is not equal to Z2, then Z2 is not equal to Z1. And so R is indeed symmetric. So here we have an example where R is not reflexive, not transitive, but it is symmetric. One more, one more example. This is actually a really, really important example. So fix some M in the set of natural numbers. So the set of natural numbers is one, two, etc. Okay, so that's fixed. Let me say fix. And we're going to set s equal to the set of integers. And we'll define a relation as follows. Define, we'll say a is related to b if a is congruent to b modulo m. It turns out that R is symmetric, reflexive, and transitive. So it satisfies all the conditions necessary to be an equivalence relation. So R is an equivalence relation. So I made some videos a long time ago uh, proving that this relation was in fact an equivalence relation. So I'll try to link those to this video if I can figure out how to do that. Um, just a final remark. The properties of you know, being reflexive, symmetric, and transitive, they are independent. We saw examples where um, some of the properties held and, and some didn't. So they're completely unrelated. So the properties, the properties of reflexivity, reflexivity, big words, <laughs> symmetry, And transitivity, transitivity are independent. I hope this video helps.